Hello. Um, I wanted to talk about uh, something um, that I for sure need to talk about. So these are very uh, difficult times, I would say, um, because uh, we're kind of looking at a situation where we have finished up both World War One and World War II. Um, and I think to some extent, we're not really understanding uh, some of the spiritual aspects of conflict, um, and that is with nature. So. Uh, this is a very important topic. Uh, it's kind of came to to the conclusion that um, you know there was a I went out for a uh, little uh, stroll bike ride the other night and went past the hospital and I realized that uh, during the half moon that Earth is definitely not just for humans and a big source of conflict is with the land and uh, nature trying to get along with nature and really uh, listen to earth and listen to the universe and try to come up with a way um, to share uh, things and resources. Um, but it's very important to think about life, uh, not only on earth, but off of earth. Um, and I think that really starts with uh, listening to the wildlife. Um, so I have kind of a funny story. Uh, I don't really want to explain this too much because it's kind of fun to come up with better ideas than I have about nature and wildlife. But I'll just share with you like a quick story before we get into the details here. Um, actually, I'll just jump into the details and then tell you the story later. But it has to do with talking to animals. Um, you know, I grew up uh, with a couple of caged birds, and that was a really traumatic experience for me, just having a pet that was caged uh, and things like that. But anyway, so we didn't really talk to the animals too much. We kind of, uh, you know, hugged the birds and stuff like that. Um, and uh, actually, uh, it was kind of sad because my bird passed away um it got too cold even though we tried to hug it all the time so they were probably birds from australia um a lot of the uh, tropical birds do come from australia but before i explain uh, some interesting things is that you know i have spent uh, hours talking to animals believe it or not um and it occurred to me that you know like animals do have a brain um, and I was talking with my aunt, who's a professor uh, at a university. She uh, studied in Egypt. And uh, one interesting thing that you realize is that, uh, you know, uh, communication is very complicated. Um, language is, uh, there's so many different languages out there. Uh, even in the holy books, they talk about speaking in tongues and other kind of like weird languages so sometimes you believe it sometimes you don't um i i was like talking with some people posted something terrible on the internet saying hey man like you know you believe you can talk with you know it why why shouldn't we be able to communicate in some profound way with the universe so that's something to really think carefully about if you don't do it i spend many I spent almost the, I try to spend the entire day, you know, uh, discussing things with the universe, uh, God, if you will, and the earth, and just listening to earth and trying to be outside as much as possible. So, but I wanted to say there are practical things, you know, like if you're going crazy and stressed about computers and technology, uh, one of the first things I would start to think about is the animals and wildlife because they're they are primarily not sitting in front of computers right now um, and it is very important to talk to the animals and listen to them now you might say hey this bird doesn't understand what I'm talking about but so what I was talking with my aunt if you go back to that story about my aunt who's this uh, former professor she unfortunately disappeared from planet earth um, 
miraculously, hopefully. But um, she lived up here in Egypt, right here. Um, and actually several of my family members have lived in Egypt. Now, interestingly, a lot of the education uh, happened where in Europe they kind of bailed out on Athens and they left. Well, the story is this, is that uh, they left uh, Athens, ancient history here, and then they decided to go to Alexandria, Egypt, and study in Africa because the philosophy of the Europeans was not working for them. Interesting thing about the Nile River is if you look at it here, this little region heads all the way to the uh, East African uh, Great Lakes and Lake Victoria. So actually, Jesus lived in Egypt as well when he was a little kid. And I'm sorry to talk about this story, but there's missing books. There's not necessarily missing books in the Bible, but there's a missing section in the Bible where we don't know. We know that Jesus was born, but then in the Bible, all of a sudden, in the chapters of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, it talks about Jesus as an adult. But the question is, where did Jesus go when he was in his teens and his tw and, and early twenties? A lot of people say that uh, if Jesus was born in Israel. Uh, and then he went to Egypt. He got educated actually at his very young age in Africa. The interesting thing is, is that at that time, when you're in your teens and almost getting to 20, you could either go back to Europe, which everyone already knew about, or you could head further east. It's very likely that Jesus maybe left and traveled either down this coast here or this coast here and get it headed over to either Pakistan in India. Um, there is some record that Jesus did travel to India and even traveled to Kashmir. So there's a very questionable thing. And even to this day, there are Christians primarily on the west coast of India, which is very interesting. So, um, but going back to the story here is talking to animals is that uh, I was joking with my friend the other day and I said, well, the reason Jesus didn't travel to Africa is he was afraid that they would kill him in Africa. And that's kind of a terrible story. But so Jesus maybe didn't travel to Africa because he grew up in Egypt. And instead, he decided to travel out east. And some records even say that Jesus went to Japan, believe it or not. So anyway, enough about this story. But talking to animals and the wildlife is very important. And my point being is that Jesus Christ and Muhammad both learned a lot from Africa, actually. And it's really true that... Uh, uh, Israel is more a part of the Middle East than it is of Europe, and meaning that it's even more part of Africa. And Africa has amazing stories to tell with wildlife, as well as India and Southeast Asia. So really, uh, one of the end times questions is, how do we think about wildlife and war and conflict uh, differently so that we're not doing what we did in the past, which is just terrible, right? So. If we learn to work with the animals, perhaps the animals are very important. If we have a peaceful life just for humans, that's not going to work on Earth. We need a peaceful life for all life, not only on Earth, but around the universe, even if animals maybe are kind of alien um, in some respect. So the question is, how do we get along? And it's very important in these times where we have conflict, actual wars have been going on. We don't discuss wars like we used to, um, but uh, there's still very there's uh, there's some very terrible things that could potentially happen, and we need to trace it back to the root of a problem, which is perhaps not what we think, and it's actually maybe wildlife. I talked with a friend of mine in the military, and I said, uh, and I want to be cautious about the word friend, but I mentioned. Uh, uh, of course, I've tried to be friends with everyone. However, I mentioned to my, to my friend is that, well, you know, if we're going to go in and attack a foreign country, what is wrong with them having their own wildlife, right? Their own way of being and like, you know, like, how is it right for us to go there and kill them? Uh, it's not, that's just, that seems really out of bounds. So we have to rethink, if you understand what I'm talking about, essentially I'm saying that 
you know, going and killing all the wild animals out there, it's one thing to say that this wild animal is a bad wild animal, so let's go kill it. Maybe not a great, great approach to life in general, right? So, like, it's like going to another country, oh, they're just wild animals over there, let's kill them all. That's not a good approach. So, we need to rethink about the balance of all life on Earth, and really, it's the wildlife. So, when I say wildlife, I kind of mean, like, have a wildlife, but uh, in some senses, it's really about the uh, diversity of animals and all the different animals and really trying to get along. And I definitely am working on trying to understand however i have a lot of work to do and i definitely need your advice on things so we are looking at a species map so this is number of species so there's basically twelve thousand species in the red areas different types of animals that's twelve thousand so and the blue areas have no wildlife so essentially greenland has zero species whatsoever and antarctica has absolutely nothing right the reason they call it antarctica was because they couldn't even find an ant on antarctica i don't like that story i think there needs to be a better story than that one but anyway so uh basically this map is not the only key either this is just one perspective of looking at this and again this is a number of species you can kind of see that chart there so again going back to the point of spending time talking with the animals and i had i visited my friend and i was so depressed about things and i just sat on his doorstep and the only animals we have in the united states which you can see is very little animals whatsoever it's almost like the desert um, compared to some of these places um, you know, I was out on the street the other day and all we had was like one bird tweeting and I joked with my friend. I was like, I can't believe uh, that I'm living here in the United States with only one animal on the whole street. Um, and, uh, you know, it's kind of so I, what I'll do is I'll sit there and I don't want to get into the whole thing, but let's talk about something called life fields first. So I'm sorry if this is getting a little bit abstract, but we want to dive into these details as well. So uh, but. In general, what I'm trying to say here is that this is the regions, but it's not the only way to look at Earth. So this is a uh, chart showing the uh, climate map. And you can see here that these maps do not line up. That means that the data scientists are not uh, in agreement about wildlife or these areas. So these are the potential areas, the red zones and the pink zones, where we definitely should have a lot of wildlife. Um, however, that is not the case uh, in general. And you can see how important the Amazon is uh, and even a little sliver of Florida. And I often uh, think about how important and precious Florida is to the United States because, man, without Florida, we would have no clue of what is really going on in wildlife. And if you've been to Florida, it's actually very urbanized. So it's not, uh, the lizards are running around your yard and things like that. And uh, there's roadkill uh, everywhere. So it's really kind of a terrible situation. Uh, and But actually they've almost kicked out all the wildlife. So, and the problem is that's really the story all around the earth. And that's a scary story to have saying that essentially humans have taken over the entire planet. So we are at war which we absolutely shouldn't be with the wildlife and we need to rethink about what's going on actually these areas need to be like think about how we get food we primarily have a farm and we grow it on a farm and then we eat the food that's not the case for wildlife right they have to have natural vegetation and natural cycles of how everything like you have to have bananas apples oranges fruits nuts grass, all those things working together. So it is very important that we have a, a ecosystem as well, uh, or a balanced, uh, a diverse range of animals and wildlife working together. Um, and the more we can learn from that, the better we can understand how we can balance things at higher levels of human development, uh, including uh, artificial intelligence. So uh, there may be some patterns that work in nature that will also work in AI. So we need to study this carefully so that we can see how the balance really works in a complicated system where even animals uh, you know, are in conflict with themselves. So, uh, and 
anyways, so what I did here is I tried to look at these two maps and combine areas. So I looked at critical habitats um, that should be very, like this area is very critical habitat, um, but it doesn't necessarily show up on the, I'm um, sorry, it, it does show up here, but there's some other areas here that did not show up as habitat, right? So, but this is an extremely important habitat. Um, and this is an extremely important habitat as well. So there's also maps that I didn't include in this discussion uh, in terms of, uh, sorry, I need to take a break for a second here. I'm gonna pause this, sorry. I need to get some water. I'm so sorry, I have to get some water to drink. Um, I'm drinking from a recycled water bottle that I found on the ground and re-recycled re it. Um, but, uh, Anyway, so uh, here's the deal is that so many aspects are important. This is a small map, but essentially we need to, if we want to stay out of world war, whatever, we need to start helping the wildlife. So anyway, um, I will try to get into more detail later. I'm going to talk about each one of these areas and why I chose them in specific and what this is all meaning perhaps at a later time. Um, it is just too much for me to explain right now and I need to go get a walk and get outside and do other things besides sit on my computer. So I really hope that you look at this map carefully. You can download it. I will post a link uh, to this detailed uh, map and it is very detailed. There are very precise pixels here that mean things. So each one of these are very important. So. Uh, but I want to close on the concept of talking with the animals and the wildlife, right? So I went, you know, I was working on something the other day. I posted it on the internet and within seconds it's on the internet and reaching maybe even a thousand people, believe it or not, crazy amount of people listen to things these days. Um, but, uh, anyway, so what I'm saying is I listen to the animals and then I re-edit my stuff oftentimes. Um, and I listen to the earth and I... You know, looked at the moon the other day and noticed it was a half moon and we got to be really sharing with the earth um, and things like that. So basically what I'm saying is that animals have brains. Um, whether they have all the specific knowledge that you have does not matter. Um, what matters is I believe there's a life field connecting to the entire universe. Um, a life field essentially is is that there's a relationship between you and other life you exist they exist they have a life um they you know and uh, the, the planet the moon the stars the universe everything so what i'd recommend is thinking carefully about how this life field works um and that's just a name um you can come up with any name you want but essentially think carefully about talking with animals um, and I'll tell you a quick thing, um, you know, birds, they fly around um, and you can tell a bird to go talk with other people and help out the rest of the planet. Talk with the animals about good things and try to do really fun stuff. Um, and hopefully we can make a lot of great things happen. So I hope you've really learned a lot from this. We're going to go into way, way more details on all of these areas. Um, and there is a very important areas here, um, as well as this climate map. And I'm going to go through this climate map one more time, just so you can see it carefully, um, some of these areas. Um, and it is not just this map. This is only, I would say, 30% of what we need to know, because actually the ocean is perhaps the main key to wildlife. And I have completely not even discussed that yet right so this map has nothing to do with that so uh there's definitely a very missing link to this image so these guys have done all their research but what about the wildlife in the ocean right we don't even have the map for that so whoa like why are we even looking at this so we start with at least something so i definitely need to look at the animals and i've looked at the fishing regions and things but let me go back to spiritual stuff because it really starts with spiritual stuff make sure that that you really have a solid spiritual understanding of the universe and earth and the wildlife and we can prevent a lot of problems just by being nice to each other and working together so think about everything um but start with a really solid um 
you know foundation so um anyway so uh thanks so much i'll try to get into all these details of why these are important um, and i really hope this will help you out thank you so much see you later